Hi there. Today we're taking a look at section 5.5, inequalities in a single triangle. <clears throat> now, there are several theorems here, and the first one, the first two actually, have to do with um, the sides and the angles within a triangle. For example, if you have this triangle here, triangle ABC, I'm going to change the letters down here so we don't confuse them, triangle ABC, side length of 3, side length of 5. What this says is that the angle opposite the larger side is the larger angle. So this angle is going to, if I label this one over here Y, this angle here is going to be greater than this angle because this side is greater than this side. So angle X is greater than angle Y. Okay because this side AC is greater than this side AB. All right, this goes in reverse as well. <clears throat> if this angle is 60 degrees here, let's call this DEF, D, E, and F. All right, if this angle is 60 degrees, then the side opposite it, EF, is going to be larger than the side opposite the 40 degree angle. Larger angle, larger side opposite it. So in this case, angle D is bigger than angle E, so therefore EF is bigger than DF. All right, those are two of the theorems that we have. We have two others, the exterior angle inequality theorem, which is up here. That says that this angle out here, an exterior angle, is greater than either of the two remote interior angles. So the measure of angle one is greater than the measure of angle two, and the measure of angle 1 is also greater than the measure of angle 3. <clears throat> now, that makes sense because if you may recall a previous theorem that said this angle is actually equal to the measure of those two. Therefore, it must be greater than either one of them individually. And the third one, which I consider the most significant in this section, is the triangle inequality theorem. And this comes up all the time. This theorem says that if you have, let's see, let me put it this way. The sum of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the third side. So x plus y must be greater than z, and x plus z must be greater than y, and y plus z must be greater than x. So let's see what happens if we put some numbers to that. Let's say this is 3, this is 5, and this is 8. Now, let's see if that works. 5 plus 3 is equal to 8, but it's not greater than 8, so we have a problem. That won't work. That doesn't make for a triangle. Let's try this. 6 plus 3 is 9, that's greater than 8. 8 plus 6 is 14, that's greater than 3. And 8 plus 3 is 11, that's greater than 6. So this is a possible triangle. What happens is, of course, if you have a base like this, the other two sides together have to be greater than the length of that base because together they have to rise up above the base. <clears throat> if they are the same length, then they don't have enough length to rise above the base and you don't have a triangle. And if they're less, then you're going to have this. They're not going to rise up far enough to make a triangle that way. So, any two sides of a triangle have to be greater than the length of the third side. The type of problem that comes up with that particular theorem, 5.13, looks like this. Let's say you have a triangle. <clears throat> here, I'm going to move it over a little bit. Let's say you have a triangle here. And the sides measure x plus 2, x plus 3, x plus 3, and 3x minus 2. Now, what we're saying is, these two sides have to be greater than this one, these two sides must be greater than this one, and these two sides must be greater than this one. So, the question is, what are the possible values of x that will make this a legitimate triangle? So, we're going to say x plus 2 plus x plus 3 
must be greater than 3x minus 2. The second one is <clears throat> x plus 2 plus 3x minus 2 must be greater than x plus 3. And the third one I'll put over here, so there's number 1, number 2, and the third one says x plus 3, x plus 3, plus 3x minus 2, must be greater than x plus 2. Now, let's solve each of those and see what kind of a range we get. 2x is here, so 2x plus 3 and 2 is 5, must be greater than 3x minus 2. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and I get 5 must be greater than x minus 2, and then if I add 2 to both sides, I get 7 must be greater than x, or x must be less than 7. So there's one of our three parameters. x must be less than 7. Now let's try this one. This is 4x, and those two cancel out, must be greater than x plus 3, minus x, minus x, and I get 3x must be greater than 3, or x must be greater than 1. <coughs> All right, now I have x must be less than 7, and x must be greater than 1. Now let's see what the third one does over here. That's 4x plus 3 minus 2 is 1, must be greater than x plus 2. So I subtract the x, I get 3x must be greater than 1, and I divide by 3, and I get x must be greater than 1 third. All right. For those two sides to work, x must be greater than a third, but I have a more restrictive one over here. x has to be greater than 1. So I'm going to use this one and this one. This one is not relevant because this one is more restrictive. So the answer is x must be <laughs> greater than 1. So I'm going to put x in the middle. It must be greater than 1, and it must be less than 7. So there's the answer. X is greater than 1 and less than 7. All right, I'm going to try one more problem here just to make sure you have the idea. And this is slightly different. The numbers are just a little bit different. But you will get the idea here, I think. Let's take the second one, which is a triangle that looks like this. And we have 3x minus 1 and x plus 2. x plus 2, and this one is x plus 4. All right. So we know that x plus 2 plus x plus 4 has to be greater than 3x minus 1. We also know x plus 2 plus 3x minus 1 has to be greater than x plus 4. And the third one that we know over here is x plus 4 plus 3x minus 1 has to be greater than x plus 2. So now I have this number 3, number 1, number 2. Let's solve them. 2x plus 6 has to be greater than 3x minus 1. So I subtract the 2x, I get x, and if I add, I get 7. So x must be less than 7. We had that one in the previous problem. Let's see what we get here. This is 4x plus 3 must be greater than x plus 4. Uh, so that becomes 3x <coughs> must be greater than 1. x must be greater than 1 third. That sounds familiar. Let's see if this one's any different. We have 4x plus 3 is greater than x plus 2. And this is uh, 3x then. Subtract the x. 3x and I is, let's see, plus 3 is greater than 2. I subtract the 3, and I get 3x is greater than negative 1, or x is greater than negative 1 third. Now, take a look at these three. This one is more restrictive than this one. This one says x only has to be greater than negative a third. This one 
excludes some numbers and says x must be greater than one third. So this is the one I want, and this one, and now I have a final statement that says x in the middle is greater than one third and less than seven. And there's your answer. All right. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.